Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to continue working on our transform class by creating rotation. So, I'm going to create a private vector 3f called rotation, and I'm going to go ahead and generate getters and setters for it, so there you go, at the end, and yeah. And of course, just like with the translation, I'm going to create a convenience method, just in case I don't want to actually, you know, to, to just pass in a vector 3. So, I'm going to create a new vector 3, x, y, and z. There. So, really, now I just need to add into our transformation method the matrix 4f rotation matrix. And this is going to equal a new matrix 4f, and just like with the translation, I'm going to have to go into my matrix class. Well, I guess I don't have to, but I am going to go into my matrix class. And I'm going to create a convenience method to initialize the rotation matrix. So, just like before, I'm going to start by copying the identity matrix. And I'm going to change this to init rotation. It's going to take in some amount in x, some amount in y, and some rotation in z. Although this one's going to be a little bit different, because, you see, the way I'm going to do rotation is I'm going to rotate, I'm essentially going to do 2D rotations for each individual plane. So I'm going to do a 2D rotation around the z-axis, 2D rotation around the y-axis, and a 2D rotation around the x-axis. I'm going to get a matrix for each one of those. And then I'm going to multiply all those matrices together to get the final 3D rotation. So. Let's start off with that. So I'm going to create a matrix 4f, rotation x, it's going to be a new matrix 4f. Whoa. Okay. That's also one I want, but I'm going to start off with rotation x. And I'm going to create one for rotation y and rotation z. Now, next thing is I'm going to, I'm going to convert my x, y, and z to radians. So I'm going to create final float O, I don't know x underscore, why not? Just something different. It's float math dot two radians, x. And y and z, same thing. y and z. So actually, you know, why can't I just straight up change them? I don't believe I'm going to be using the angle at th after this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and change them. Float x, float y, and z going to ch change them to their radian equivalents. And there. So, with that out of the way, now I just need to actually initialize all these different matrices, x, y, and z. So, yeah. So, just to save video time, I went ahead and changed it to each individual matrices components off-screen, and went ahead and created one for each of them. So now all there's left to do is really just apply the rotation. And really, this isn't that... Well, it is exactly the same as the rotation calculation we're doing in our Vector2 class. So, I'm not going to re-explain this. If you want to know how the rotation calculation for a 2D plane works, go look in my Vector Companion video. I explain it there. But yeah, essentially we want to do this exact same sort of calculation, except for each individual axis. So first off, I'm going to start with the z-axis, because that's the same axis I'm rotating around in my Vector2 class. So, first off, first thing I want to do here is I want to multiply my x times cosine, get my final x multiplied by cosine. So, right here, this, this row right here for my z-rotation represents my final x, and I want to multiply my original x times cosine. So, to do that, I'm going to do this right here. This is the original x, so to get the original x, I'm going to take this, do math dot cosine of our x, and of course convert this to float. And I probably need a few more... yeah... I need a few more tabs to get this all to fit, but that's okay. So actually, I'll just go ahead and do that off-screen one moment. And while I was off-screen, I realized that 
this is the Z axis rotation, so I should be rotating around the Z amount. So yeah. Anyways, the next, the only other part of the X component is it's added to negative Y times sine. So, in order to do that, this is the amount that Y affects it. So, I'm going to say just negative math.sine of Z and cast it to a float. And I'm going to backspace and oh dear. Well, it's slightly off, but that's okay. So, negative math.sign. And, based on the calculation I have in here, again, if you want to know more about that, look at the Vector Companion video. I'm not going to re-explain it. If, yeah, that's the entire calculation. I have the, X, the original x times the cosine of this new angle, mine, well, plus the negative sign of this new angle times the y component. So, there you go. And then, in order to get the y amount that's affected, the calculation is x times sine plus y times cosine. So, the x is float math.sine of z, and the y is float math.cosine of z. And yeah, there you go. That completes the z component. And really, just the rest of these matrices are doing these exact same 2D rotation calculations, except instead of on the xy plane, they're doing it on, for example, for the x, the yz plane. So, in order to get the x done, I need to get the amount affecting the y and z instead of the x and... yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, essentially, same calculation, except in the y and z parts of the matrices instead of the x and y parts of the matrices. So, I'm going to move this. I'm going to replace the cosine with this right here, and it's going to be the cosine of the x amount this time, because I'm on the doing the x matrix. And this one, I'm going to be the same thing, except this time it's going to be in the y, or, well, the z, because I'm doing the yz plane. And, yeah, it's literally the exact same calculation in a different plane. And, why are you... there you go. It wasn't typing for some reason. So, yeah. Really, the rotation matrix isn't that hard, even though it looks a little bit weird. Once you understand the math behind it, the whole thing is really straightforward. Like, if you're having trouble understanding this, you're probably just overthinking it. So yeah, and the final matrix around the Y, this is around the X, Z plane. So, this is the only one that's going to look a little bit different, but it, should, it shouldn't be that hard to grasp. So, this is around the X and Z, so same calculations, except instead of on X and Y, it's on X and Z. So, yeah. And again, so this is... So, just need to do it on the Z amount now, so... Yeah. Same calculation, once again. And... Cosine. And this time, on the Z. And just... Make sure it's all... Yeah. And just make sure you're using the right variables. That's really the only tricky part. Well, I guess this is also kind of tricky. How do you multiply these to get the final matrix? Well, you sort of want to multiply them in reverse order. RZ dot multiply by RY dot multiply by RX. And that multiplies all the matrix rotations together, so now I've gotten all these rotations into one giant rotation matrix, and just... Well, I guess first off I should set, before I return, I should set m equal to this, dot get data. So, I'm going to set the m of this matrix to the matrix of that. Is it, did I make it get m this time? Okay. I thought I had it as get data. Oh well. And then just return this matrix.
And yeah, that's all there is to the rotation matrix. It's essentially doing the same 2D calculation in different rotation planes. So now we just have to really just use it. So I'm going to do this in uh, matrix 4f dot knit rotation to rotation dot get x, rotation dot get y, and rotation dot get z. So that should initialize our rotation to this new rotation. And now we need to actually use this. So be careful. Order of multiplication does matter. I want to apply the rotation matrix first and then move it, because otherwise we'll be moving it away and then doing a giant, like, giant rotation like this, rotation in a circle, not sort of rotation around itself, if that makes any sense. So, essentially I just want to multiply this by the rotation matrix in order to apply the rotation matrix first. I know it seems a little backwards, but this is the order. And yeah, so now I just really need to use it, so I'll do... I'll comment that out for now. Transform dot... Oh, I almost completely forgot. I want to initialize the rotation matrix. So, initialize the rotation matrix to just nothing. We don't want to rotate by default. So, transform dot set rotation to sum out on x, no x rotation, no y rotation, and for z, I'm going to do the sine of temp. Just well, actually, multiply it by 360. Uh, or multiply it by 180, because these should be those angles. So, let's see what happens. And, oh, there you go. We're doing a 3D rotation. It looks a little weird right now, because we're in an orthogonal projection and not a perspective projection, but that's another issue for another time. Point is, right now, our rotation is working. And we should also be able to combine it with our translation, and they should both work just fine. So, there you go. And actually, just for fun, let's take our color and multiply it by our finalized transformation matrix as well, and see what happens. Yeah! Gets a little bit of an interesting effect. But yeah, there you go. This is our finalized... Well, not our final this is our translation and rotation, working exactly as intended. So, thank you, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time, where we will actually be doing scaling. So, thank you, and until then.